Hey there everyone, they here back again with another video and let's do something interesting in this video. So in case you follow up last three videos, we actually talked about the state management in the React. In case you haven't followed that, that's also fine. In this video, we are not going to be writing some of the code, rather we'll be understanding some of the deployment and the new feature which are available for the React deployment. So just to give you a brief, in the last three videos, we learned about the state management that happens in the React. So far, Redux is the or Redux toolkit is the only way of doing it, which is majorly used in the industry. But of course, there are new players coming around all over the time and Zustend is one of such player. Now, I really like Zustend because of its simplicity, not much of the boilerplate code and there's so much less to do and so much more that Zustend does for me. So we talked about that and we have created this simple app with this, which is a simple kind of a to-do-ish app. But now the thing is that we want to deploy this app. Obviously, in the description section, you can find the code for this app and you can just simply say npm install and then npm run and the app will be running like this. We are also storing things in the local storage. That also via Zustin. So it's pretty nice. So let's add one more thing. So let's go ahead and say we want to talk about code space by GitHub. So this is kind of a new approach that we are going to follow to deploy this. So we can go ahead and use this, check mark that and check whatever that is. Okay, now the idea is we want to push this code onto GitHub and further down can see and explore a little bit about the code space which is given to us by the GitHub. It is a bit in the early access, but it's slowly rolling out to all and everyone. So I've already pushed this code onto my uh, public account on GitHub. You can use that in the private repository as well. There is no problem there. Now, once you click on there, just like where you see the code download, you can see the code space. Pre previously, it was just a local if you want to bring the repository to local. Now you can use the code space and can create a code space on main or any other branch based on that. But before that, obviously, you want to check out the code space, what this is. So code space is a simple workflow that manages the CI CD pipeline for you. You can deploy individual branches or the main branch as a production and other branches as staging, however you like. And as soon as the code is being pushed on that particular branch, code space allows you to push it directly into the production. So you don't need to set Jenkins or you don't need to set any var cell or something in between. You can just use the GitHub machines to do all of this into the production as well. So you can configure, manage, develop locally. So it's, it's kind of a pretty nice workflow. We'll be using this code space uh, click button up in a minute. But first, let's see what all it gives us when you click on the create new code space. So you can click up here. Obviously, right now, this is all free, obviously. Eventually, they'll be charging it a little bit amount of money based on what kind of resources you're using, what RAM you're using, what memory and all of that. So we can go ahead and click on select a repository. Obviously, I'm not going to click on that. There is a lot of repository going in into my account. Then you can select the branches and all the regions that they are available. I'm pretty sure they are expanding on the region. I would not like to deploy it on the US East because I'm in India. So I would choose a region which is near to me. And then what is the machine type? Now, this is something really interesting. Let me show you that. Let me just select the Zustand repository. So let me go ahead and say Zustand and uh, yeah, Zustand crash course. And we would be deploying the main branch on it and then the dev container configuration. So you can just choose the default configuration, but it supports a lot of that. Uh, you can deploy the Docker and whole lot of thing configuration that you have, you can have that. Southeast Asia, I think that's nearest to me. And then what kind of machine you want? Uh, you want a four core machine, which is a four core, eight gigs of RAM, 32 GB of uh, storage. Uh, you can also go a little bit lower than that, but it's actually right now calculating based on recommendation. Obviously, I don't like that. I like more fine grain control over that. That would be much better for me. Let's go ahead and try to create a code space based on all of this. Okay, so this is now setting up all the things, uh, dev container.json file. Obviously, we need to study a little bit more of the documentation to finally figure out that how this is all going on and how this is working. Now, it says open this code space in the VS Code desktop. Now, this is fantastic. I can just, but I'm a little bit worried about that as well because it might destroy a lot of things <laughs> because giving access in the production where you can just do one push and everything goes, uh, we need to set up a work infrastructure or a workflow which controls all of that. Okay, so now this is all going and I would choose a dark theme that would be, or a dark, uh, too dark. This one is fine and we can go with that. And it's saying npm install. Let's just wait for a couple of seconds uh, till it deploys everything. Okay, so it took a little bit while and I need to check and figure out some of the issues that were I was running into. So let me share with that. And yes, I was able to successfully deploy that. So let's go ahead and walk through with that. 
So obviously, once you deploy that, this is the screen that you're going to be getting. So this is how it looks like. And you can just use the VS Code shortcuts to get your terminal access up here. So what GitHub's code space does, it actually runs your application on a certain port and, the, and then it does the port forwarding so that rest of the world can access it onto a different port. Of course, that it should be. Now, on top of that, when I tried to run this, this actually was giving me a bit of the error on the first go. And then I realized that this is not working. So obviously it's a port space. They give you directly a port access that where you can run the application. So I created a new file .env, of course, the environment variable file. And further, I created a new port 4200 just expecting that it should be free up uh, for everyone and we can roll out our application on that and it worked out nicely after that it's simply npm start that's pretty much it and you can just keep on running it indefinitely there and as soon as i run this this actually creates a react application for me and i can access this directly up here now surely i'm pretty sure if these uh, variables and in these urls are available they can be mapped onto some of the domains as well so that you can run your this entire application and set onto your own custom domain as well now this is how it looks like so let me go ahead and walk you through with that how it looks like so it's simply uh, github.com and an individual account you can have your code spaces up here so this is the machine that is running right now you have all these options that you can open in the browser open in the visual studio code or you can change the machine type and if you click on that these are the machine types that they have but you can actually go ahead and change them in the future hopefully so that are uh, that is also going to come in now as of now you don't require any credit card or something but i'm going to just stop this machine and by the way one more cool feature is you can open this in the visual studio code so it allows you to open visual studio code surely it's going to ask me to install one more extension up here so install and open so this extension is github code space that is going to be available and then i'll be able to sync my code spaces directly from my local machine this is something unreal but i'm enjoying that how this is all going in now obviously now it's time that we actually go ahead and delete this instance surely it is as of now totally free but i don't want to consume any resources because i don't need them as of now surely i'll be playing more around it and will push more tutorials if you want me to make more tutorials on building the rest api using the code spaces or something let me know in the comment section i would be really happy to do it if enough of demand is coming in so that's it for this video go ahead hit that subscribe icon and hit that bell icon too and i'll surely catch you up in the next video